If you're taking calculus, you need this book. Whether you're in a calculus honors class or an AP calculus class or a calculus class in college, this is a fantastic resource for some calculus one and some calculus two content. It's one of those does what it says on the tin situations. This is the humongous book of calculus problems. That's exactly what it is. But more importantly than being a humongous book of calculus problems, it's a humongous book of solutions to every last one of those problems. As it says here, 1,000 calculus problems with comprehensive solutions for all your major topics in Calc 1 and Calc 2. So if you're doing an advanced placement course, whether you're in AP Calc AB or AP Calc BC, this book has you covered and then some with tons of fantastic practice and great solutions. This is part of the humongous book of problems series. I think they have a lot of books like this, humongous book of geometry problems, algebra problems, all sorts of other stuff too. We'll take a quick look at the back of the book. The only way to learn calculus is to do calculus problems, and a lot of them, and I agree. They give you a little look here at what a page of the book looks like. That's what's in the background. That's what you get here. More calculus problems than your worst nightmare, but with a big difference. I've been through the whole book and made a ton of notes. So that's kind of what this looks like, right? We'll look through the book and you'll see that it looks like a very well annotated calculus notebook. It's got all these problems, all these solutions, these nice notes, important points, warnings, and even some pro tips. And here's a pro tip. If you think a book like this might be helpful, check out my Calculus One Exercises playlist, which is always growing and has tons of calculus problems fully solved. You might also want to consider supporting Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can join as a member and get access to hours of exclusive calculus video content. High quality, solving lots of problems, it's good stuff. And access to some more videos looking at fun math books and other math things. You can look at those earlier than anybody else if you want to consider joining as a channel member. Let's take a look inside at this book. Let's go to the beginning. The table of contents here in this book I find quite charming. You can see that it gives kind of a formal title for these chapters, linear geometry, absolute value equations and inequalities and so on. But then it also gives you a sort of layman's terms or brief explanation of what the chapter is about. Because you can't have exponents of one forever, powers and square roots, add, subtract, multiply, and divide polynomials. It's just giving you the skinny on what these chapters actually contain. So not only does it have a bunch of Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 content, but you can see here with equations and inequalities and polynomials, functions, it also has a lot of review content too that you probably should have learned in pre-calculus. There are also several nice appendices, important graphs to memorize and graph transformations, unit circle, some trig derivative formulas, antiderivative formulas, lots of good stuff in the appendix. Now here is a look at the introduction. Are you in a calculus class? Yes. Well then you need this book. And here's the author's explanation of why you need this book. Fact one, the best way to learn calculus is by working out calculus problems. And as they say, your, your calc textbook typically isn't going to have solutions, not fully worked out ones, but this book will. Fact two, well, that, that is the fact. Fact three, even when math books try to show you the steps for a problem, they do a lousy job. That is certainly sometimes true. This book really tries to be thorough, and it does a pretty good job of that. Fact number four, this, this one might be hitting us with some irony. Reading lists of facts is fun for a while. I hope you're having fun so far. But then it gets old. Let's cut to the chase. Just about every single kind of calculus problem you could possibly run into is in here. After all, this book is humongous. If a thousand problems aren't enough, what does it say next? Then, then you've, you've got some kind of crazy math hunger, my friend, and I'd seek professional help. Um, very good. Okay. Uh, this book is pretty big. It's not that big. I mean, like, 
I feel like it's not even as big as Stewart's Calculus, which for a lot of students is going to be the textbook that you're using. If you're in an AP Calculus course, then your AP Calculus book might be a little bit smaller than this book here. Skipping ahead to chapter 10, this is on evaluating limits. And by the way, in chapter 9, they talk a bit about the formal definition of a limit, epsilon delta stuff, which you could find in my real analysis playlist, but isn't going to be covered in most calculus classes. Um, so you can see how the chapters start here. They start with your title, they start with a sort of summary of the upcoming chapter, and then some you know, motivation, tips, whatever you might find here. If you had to draw a graph for every single limit you were asked to calculate, it would get old pretty fast indeed. So you just get some fun notes and thoughts there. And then this is the general format of the bulk of the book. You get a problem, you get a solution, you get a problem, you get a solution, and there are lots of these little bubbles on the side giving you various tips, warnings, and additional explanation on techniques that were used in the solutions. In this side note here, it tells us why we can't just plug x equals 4 into the fraction. Of course, when you first start evaluating limits, you typically do it by just plugging in the value into the function, and there you go. But very shortly you find that that will not always work. And an indeterminate value, some students will will want to stop there and say, okay, the limit doesn't exist. But I always try to emphasize that word, indeterminate. We have not determined what the limit is. We haven't determined it if it exists or not. We, we have no idea, which is exactly what this note says here. A helpful note indeed. You can see warnings are accompanied by this skull and crossbones, and this is a very good warning here. So this says calculate the exact value of the limit of this big disgusting thing. And the warning warning mentions, because this is really important for you to know as a calculus student, that this is a nice way, exact, this is a nice way of saying don't even think about using your calculator to figure out this problem, because you'll get a decimal instead of a fraction, and I'll know you couldn't do it by hand. That's sort of speaking from the teacher's perspective. If I put exact value in a question on a test, um, your calculator's not going to be able to give you that. So. I want, I want it written out. I want the algebraic solution. I want you to use your noggin, not your TI-84+. plus. Here's something interesting I just noticed. In chapter 13, the book talks about critical numbers. And the way it defines critical numbers is that A is a critical number of the function f of x if f of a is zero or if f of a is undefined, if it doesn't exist. This is not the definition of critical number that I can recall ever seeing in a calculus book. Every calculus book that I've looked at says that a critical number um, is this, but for a function's derivative, a critical number of f of x is an x coordinate where f prime is either not defined or where f prime is zero. So that's kind of interesting. It's not super uncommon for the, there to be little discrepancies in definitions like this. If there were a lot of little discrepancies throughout this book, though, that would be rather annoying because most people will probably use this book, and I would recommend using this book as a companion book, right? This isn't going to give you all the instructional material um, that you might want as far as textbooks go, and for your calculus class, this is certainly not going to be the assigned textbook, but you might want to get a textbook plus this book so that you can have a bunch of problems ready to go with full solutions. And if there was a ton of disagreement between the definitions in this and your textbook, obviously that would be a problem. But I've looked at this book a good amount and I've that's my first time noticing something quite like that. Here we're into the integral section and the book gives you this nice rule of thumb. Now rules of thumb are nice especially for limits and integrals because what makes them difficult is that how to proceed in evaluating a limit or integral is not always obvious, so having some rules of thumb to fall back on is really useful. The rule of thumb here is that if a trig function, or any other function for that matter, contains something other than just x, you need to use u substitution to integrate, which is just like the chain rule. If you were trying to differentiate a function that has something in it other than just x, well, you've got a composite function, and you'll have to use the chain rule. Now, the writing out that most students will do when doing u substitution 
is not always necessary if you have a fairly simple example. Like if you're integrating sine of 2x, I certainly encourage my students to not always write out the u substitution once they get the hang of it. Because if we are talking AP calculus and just in general, you know, you don't want to waste time on these more trivial problems. And once we get to some applications of integration and the fundamental theorem, you can start to see that the book also has nice graphs that have lots of space. You know, nothing's, um, I, I don't feel like anything's too squished here. At times it can feel a little cluttered because there, there are all these little side notes, but overall the math is given a lot of room to breathe. It's formatted very nicely. It's very easy to read. Um, the pages are thin. They're not the most premium quality pages, but that's kind of what, what you're going to get with a big workbook type of thing like this. Uh, but they're pleasant to touch, you know, they're nice soft pages, they're nice and big, and uh, so it's just a really pleasant experience to work with this book. And if you were, you know, working through this with the pencil, there's also lots of room for you to write your own stuff, your own notes here on the sides. Now by chapter 20, we're talking about integrating rational expressions. And this chapter is going to culminate with partial fraction decomposition. So one of the surprising notes I've found here is that at this point in the book, you know, we're talking page 345, chapter 20, well into integration. It takes the time to say that dividing by one half, because we're dividing by a half in that line, you see what happens in the subsequent line. We have a factor of two. So it says dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two just like dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. Now that might be a positive sign to you or a negative sign that they're taking the time this late in, into the book for a note like that. That seems like to me maybe an unnecessary one, um, just, just on account of how far into the book we are and this is calculus and, and we're into our integration and all that. But uh, whatever, you know, I mean, really that's just, that, that should just be considered a positive thing all the things that, that they take the time to explain. It's, it's hard to imagine though that there's not a single step in here that was maybe more deserving of an explanation. I don't know. The book does also have some useful self-references. So like here when they have to do some polynomial long division, still we're talking about integrating rational expressions. It says, hey, if you got to review long division of polynomials, look at problems 2.16 and 2.17. So there's not long paragraphs of explanatory exposition in this book. You know, if you want to get something explained to you, you're just going to have to look through these examples. But it is nice that the book tells you what examples you can look at at certain points um, if there's material that you might need to review. Once we get into advanced applications of definite integrals, you start to get some nice 3D diagrams as well. And uh, yeah, like I said earlier, the book is going to conclude here with... Did I say how the, how the book will conclude? I'm not sure if I did say that. We have differential equations in chapter 25, which is covered in the AP Calculus curriculum. We get basic sequences and series here in chapter 26. And in chapter 27, we have some additional infinite series and convergence tests. All of this stuff I find is really well laid out. Chapter 28 is advanced infinite series. So here we get into power series and intervals of convergence. Also, Taylor and McLaurin series are covered. And is that going to be pretty much the last topic? Yes. Then you get into Appendix A. You have these cute graphs that you should probably memorize, right? You should just know what graphs of these functions look like. This is stuff that mostly you should probably know from pre-calculus. Stuff like how constants transform a graph. You've got a cute hand-drawn unit circle trigonometric identities in Appendix C. You've got some derivative formulas in Appendix D. Appendix E gives you some nice antiderivative formulas. And then you have your index. This is a really, really tiny list though of antiderivative formulas and derivative formulas, frankly. I have some calculus books that are pretty funny because they say, you know, a brief table of integrals and then they give you like three pages of extremely small print integrals. It's quite amusing. So that is a humongous book of calculus problems. That's a look at the book. I'm just giving you a little look through the table of contents here. 
Yeah, I strongly recommend this book. If you think you're gonna want some additional calculus practice and solutions, then this book is a must have. It's a really great option. It's kind of similar to the Barron's AP Calculus book. I haven't worked with that book as much, um, but in the time that I have spent with them, I have to say that I prefer this book. And if you were doing AP Calculus, this book is gonna cover everything you need. And it will have some extras too, which might serve you well in a future calculus course. Again, I'll recommend my playlist of Calculus One exercises and joining as a channel member to get access to more exclusive calculus instruction. However, it's nice to just have a book sometimes, so you don't have to be tapped into the internet, which is more distracting. With this, you just sit down, grab a paper, grab a pencil, grab a cup of joe, and do some work. I'm gonna grab a cup of joe now and get to work editing this video.